Sign up for our monthly giveaway. Every month, we give away exclusive Cigars and Seas Stories gear, as well as items for our guests and sponsors. Those are gadgets, gizmos, all sorts of different stuff. When you subscribe to our newsletter by going to CigarsAndSeasStories.com and clicking subscribe, you automatically enter into our monthly giveaway. How you earn points for those giveaway is by sharing the referral link with your network. Every time you share, you earn a point. Every time one of your friends subscribes, you earn an additional five points. So go to cigarsandseastories.com right now and subscribe. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles in the air on land and sea. First to fight for right and free. On this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Bennett and Mike are sitting down having a team episode, and we are going to discuss the Fatal Funnel. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Bennett had no idea what the topic was until now. Not Big until just bow. now. That's, see, that's how we do it. That shit's funny. Fatal Funnel. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm a rabbit. I'm a rabbit. <laughs> are you going to run you know it? what I'm talking about when I say that? Yeah, running the rabbit. Yeah, so you got the guy, first guy in the door is a fucking rabbit. Yeah. To pull to pull the, the fire out of the Fatal Funnel. Right. Right. That's so funny. We used I'm a to, rabbit. I'm a rabbit. We used to have the guy, he would stand there as, a, and I shit you not, I'd have him whenever I was teaching CQB stuff, I would have him say it, you know, nice and low. But right. I'd have him say it. I'm a rabbit. I'm a rabbit. I'm a rabbit. Because <laughs> I wanted him focused on fast movement and pulling, basically being a bullet magnet to pull. And, and it's kind of sucks. It's sad that that's the way it is. But at the end of the day, it worked. Right. So absolutely pull, worked. It, we would pull the freaking the 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 fire out of the funnel. And then, you know, number two is coming through the door so fast that he's smoking everybody. Right. Right. So, yeah. This is really funny. I'm a right. rabbit. on, And I, I'd literally have them stand there and be like, I'm a rabbit. 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 <laughs> and then you'd hear boom and it'd go. I'm a rabbit. It's fucking hysterical. Oh, so, man, anyway, that's good. That was just the tech. That was the training techniques. And like, you know, leaders have training techniques and they're like assholes and everybody's got them. But that was mine to get that fucking number one man that beat into his head. I'm a rabbit. Right. <laughs> Right. And and even to this day, it's what, how many years later now? 15 years, 16 years since I've done that work. And yep. it still hit me. As soon as you said Fatal Funny, I said, I'm a rabbit in my <laughs> fucking head. I'm a rabbit. You're like, I'm going to be the one man in that motherfucker and just go. Yeah, whatever. Like, this is happening. You know? I mean, we all rotate through it. Oh, absolutely. So just, you know, I'm a rabbit. The one man is just the guy who approaches that door. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm doing if I'm doing shotgun entry on something, blasting the door open, I swing. So my whole thing was, you know, if I was to breach a door, let's say, for instance, with a shotgun that goes high, low, medium, boom, and then you swing outboard and you reload your shotgun, rotate right. over to your M4, and become the last man in the stack. But I mean, Jesus, dude, that was way few and far between. There were rare moment that I got to blow open an Iraqi's door. Uh, you know, the majority of the time when we were going in and out of homes, it was just like, you know, just hit it. Yeah. Just turn yeah. around, donkey kick it. You know, the, the one man goes through, but it was always, if you needed to call shit out as you were going in, you could, yep. depending on the scenario. But I, I mean, in the middle of the deployment, it was just, you would just flow through houses. You know, oh, yeah. But, Fuck yeah. But now, I always, let me ask you a question, and this is self-serving too, uh, but I just want to hear it. When you guys flowed through a house, did you mark doors and stuff? No. You didn't? Well, and I say it that way because we would, it depended on the operation. If we hit a house and uh, we we had different phase what line about, signals. What about builds? So we would mark a home. We, okay, so we would either crack a chem light on a sweep, which you knew based on where all the hem lights were, where the last phase line was, which became yeah. a freaking so, problem. And, and, that, and that's kind of what I'm getting at is, is did you guys mark shit with chem lights? So we did, we, so we did, but we also used chem lights in other various ways that were much more sparing. Um, cause you know well, how it is. Okay. You're leaving part, behind part trail trace. The, 
right. But num- number one, you guys were Marines, so you probably the budget for Camelites was probably right. like a hundred bucks for like the whole deployment. <laughs> Where the army literally throws like as they're on patrol, they would get to a corner, like a night patrol or something. They'd get to a corner and throw like five of them out the window to mark their route. You, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. See, I'm mm, just saying. No. You, you know, but do you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. It's the difference between the Marine Corps and the army. But anyway. I don't want to get sidetracked. So, well, cause... so marking, but but what you would do also is probably mark because if you had supporting fires, you'd have to mark what's clear and what's not, um, at least to know where. So the supporting fires would know where your progress was, right? So, well, yeah. So we yeah. always had. Remember, we were rolling with gun trucks. So when we were moving in and out of compounds, which it's funny because okay, so you've got you have a compound entrance way. Yeah, there's a fatal funnel there, but that's more of a choke point than anything else. Yep. Then right. you actually have the entrance to the house. That's a fatal funnel. All of the other rooms are fatal funnels. There are choke points throughout it. Yeah, um, see, so it's it's one of those things where you've literally got, you know, a compound that could have, you know, four buildings in it, five buildings in it. And right. there's a giant fucking wall around it. And usually what, a man door and a vehicle entrance? Or was it, you know what I mean? It just depended. Yeah. Um. Anyway. You're exactly right. Well, it was a gate, man door, and, a lot and of then times a vehicle you had the entry. Gate, yeah, a lot of times you had the vehicle entry with the man door in the gate. And we, or, yeah. I don't think, I mean, I think I, I maybe walked through uh, or rather entered two or three compounds by the door, maybe. And I've entered hundreds of compounds, but they always put IEDs on the other side of the door. Or at yeah. least that's where the pressure yeah. switch is. So, yeah. you know, we wouldn't blow open watching videos. Yeah, I remember watching videos of guys breaching the wall with either the breacher tape, the uh, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, dude, the tape or they would just put a AT4 through the side of the wall. I'm going to tell, tell you whatever. I'm going to tell you what blow a hole in it. I'm going to tell you what cat does. All right. Because this is <laughs> slick, Rick, sexy. All right. We roll up in front of the house. Cordon is already set, so that's the second section. So second section rolls up and four points the intersection, and they do it to where entry point is clear. Dismounts pop out, right? Dismount the truck right as they get past that intersection. So now all of them can snug up against the wall, and then those gun trucks all roll right up over top of the curb onto the sidewalk up against the wall, and it's like, I got a fucking gun truck, dude. You run all the way up the back ramp, put a foot off of the gunner's turret and then just jump into that dude's compound ready to fucking slay bodies that's how we would get into compounds and it was awesome and if we needed to and like we were doing something crazy because we did two or three sweeps through ramadi we'd work with tanks and i saw a couple of times where we got to take out walls which was pretty cool a yeah. tank just backing into it, like, oh, who put that there? Oh, sorry. You know, and it's, sorry. you're receiving contact from the building, so all of these shitheads are trying to shoot a fucking tank with their AK-47s. <laughs> Right. And meanwhile, they're like backing into their compound and just demolishing all of their shit. And <laughs> I mean, what do you do? You know, you've played enough video games at this point to play that scenario out in your life, but that's a, yeah. that's right. a real fuck you moment, people. That's a, yeah. You know, I'm going to die here. Like, yeah, you probably are. Shouldn't have shot at us, you asshole. Oh, man. See, I bring up the fatal funnel because it's a metaphor whenever I'm chatting with folks. Like, especially the guy. I'm like, look, man, here's the thing. You got to choose your fatal funnel. You got to come up, kind of recon that area, right? Wall body weapon. You're getting up into it and you're pieing off that doorway, let's say, you know, because you're just kind of, you're like, oh, I'm alone in this motherfucking kill house and I'm pieing shit. I mean, if you want to run into rooms and gun shit down, that's fine. But I would be pieing stuff a little bit. You know what I mean? Taking your time going through this thing. And I used it as a metaphor for life. The fatal funnel. There's no low man on the totem pole bullshit. I don't believe in that. Fuck you. If you believe in being low man on the totem pole, then have fun being low man on the totem pole. You can fuck off. Like, do you have to do the dirty jobs? Absolutely. It does not mean that I am low man on the totem pole. Nope. And so it's like, every once in a while, you got to run the rabbit. Team leaders got to run the rabbit. Absolutely. That's that's it. Well, that's it, the fatal I mean, funnel of life. Well, again, could you call them a leader if they didn't run the rabbit? Fuck no. No, because leaders lead from the front. Right? Oh, absolutely. So at the end of the day, it's that's that's leadership 101. 
Well, and you don't ask your fucking guys to do anything that you wouldn't do yourself, right? Absolutely. Now, and you get to a point when, you know, you know, and they know that you've done it before. So you can say, as I do, you know, do as I say, but um, you, you still need to earn those fucking stripes again. I mean, that's, that's where the, that's where the fucking term came from. Right. Right. So yes, <laughs> got to earn those stripes. Oh, dude. When you're talking about like running the rabbit and stuff like that, we would use running the rabbit crossing streets, crossing danger areas, crossing Hell in between yeah. hallways. We would run the rabbit, uh, on a fatal funnel. So if you have a door, okay, so let's say for instance, the doorknob is on the right, depending on the scenario, we would stack on the right. So whatever side the doorknob was so that you could shove it open and then button hook. So one man would button hook and two man's coming into the entrance, press, press, press. And it was advantageous to have a lefty as the two man. Right. So that yeah, he was course. all muzzled well, coming in on that. Depending, depending on which way you're going in. Right. So um, if the doorknob's I mean, on the right, you want your two man a lefty. If the doorknob's on the left, you want your two man a righty. Right. Because it's all wall body weapon anyway. So everybody's going to well, be left handed in the stack. This is the, the other stack. thing that I that I used to love watching people that had no fucking clue what they're doing with CQB, right? Or whatever yeah. the fuck you want to call it. CQB. Whatever. So um, mount yeah, CQB. Mount, whatever CQB. No, I was called the it's CQB. CQB. So, so I loved it. Like the first time I ever did a operation in the, in the, you know, cause obviously like, you know, going from the Marine Corps to, to the, to the army, this was one of the growing pains. Um, and not that people didn't know what the fuck they were doing. I just had a different level of experience than this because of my background. Like we did a lot of direct action work, right? And, oh, really? And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> So we did a lot of direct action work. So I'm coming into this and I'm working with guys that just didn't have half, not even half, like even the leaders didn't have half the experience. Right. No. So, yeah. so I shit you not the first team leader I had, uh, I taught him CQB because, um, these motherfuckers would do like button hooks and shit. <laughs> I'm like, you just killed your whole team. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Walls don't stop bullets, bitch. Not, I mean, not most of them. Right. Uh, so the first, the rabbit, as we call him, he got, he's got to pull, you know, it, it, so either way, there was just things like that. Like you don't button hook, you don't, um, you know, you don't pull rounds towards your team. Oh so, yeah. I can't tell you how many times like that had to be buried into people's brains as never to button up. Right. Because uh, on the other side of the wall is your stack. And so yeah, bullets will go through the wall thing. and kill right. your stack. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like one of the best scenes in any movie ever. <clears throat> God, what movie was that? I say it, but I can't remember the movie. Where the fucking dumbass drug dealer had the barricaded door. Yes. But the outside of his fucking house had the, you know, the wall was still unprotected. So the guy's like, he's, you know, barricaded this door. And then the cop just, or the copper, whoever it was, started just shooting through the fucking wall and <laughs> killed the guy. Right. It's like you can have the most barricaded door in the fucking world, but walls, it's like, the, it's one of those misconceptions. So. Yep. It's just funny shit. Well, and, and... <laughs> The, 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 the button hook is the number one thing that you teach somebody. And then you go, okay, do you know why I'm teaching you this? Because if I shoot you, I'm going to kill all of your buddies. And they're like, row, right. row. I'm like, I gotta think about this now. Like, oh, fuck. We're all in here. Geometry of fire. Compact spaces. Yeah. Ooh. You know, oh, and by the way, um, you basically have a 40% chance in making it out alive of an active right, urban right. scenario. Like, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Run that by me again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your chances of dying are less than 50-50. It's actually 60-40. You die. So when you go into that thing, right, and our whole, you can't, our whole thing was don't go into the middle of the room, but go deep into a corner. Okay. Hell yeah. That was our biggest thing. Make sure that you clear right that corner that your team has. Okay. Oh, and by God, please stay in your fucking lane. Like you, you, when it comes to having a lane, you have to maintain your fucking lane for CQB work. Um, or other people get fucking shot. I mean, right. I've seen it right so much. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm. Well, and that's why I would rather, you know, it's funny because I was looking at CQB earlier and they have these double door scenarios, not where, it's, not where, <laughs> right. you know, it's right. like, 
you know, you look at the hallway and it's it's not essentially a double door, you know what I mean? But you look at the hallway and here's the door and then two feet to the right, there's another door and their doorknobs are on opposite sides, okay? So they open against the wall that meets in the middle of them. So they basically butterfly open. Well, how are you going to to navigate that room? You know, and what's funny about it is, more often than not, when we were training and doing any CQB type stuff, it was like, yeah, fuck that. We're not going in the door. We're going, we're going to climb to the top of the house and then go from the top down. Yeah, if, if you can. That's always number one. Yeah, number as, one as long scenario. As you can, hell yeah. Or, hey, even better. Well, the Marines can't do this ever because that's just not how they right. set up. You're, you but want a fast rope. Fast rope. <laughs> yeah, of course yeah, you do. Just saying. Just saying. Oh, Something my God. Yeah, uh, see, this is another that. This is another scenario to where it's like, yeah, fuck you. I got a truck. Yeah, I have a guy. with the assets, right? Right, it's all exactly. Assets, and, and if you can, then you do so. But fight your way to the top of the building by the by the by the the easiest path possible right mm-hmm. whether it's a central stairwell or an outdoor stairwell right and then and then uh, close with destroy the enemy shoot move and communicate your ass all the way down that fucking building and just slay bodies oh yeah and that that's what it came down to oh yeah we would climb cages Remember the cages that are around those outside oh, ladders so that yeah, people can, yeah. oh yeah, fuck that. No, this is happening. I'd put my, I would just drop to a knee, release. I had my, uh, my hooligan ladder that I'd rip out of the truck with me, run up to a wall on, you know, kind of slough it off the shoulder and extend that bitch out where the two man would extend it all the way out. We climb all the way up it, grab a hold of that cage, and just man hulk it all the way up the cage until our boots would click in, and then freaking scurry all the way up. You're carrying a hundred pounds worth of fucking body armor, ammo, explosives, your it's weapons dangling off you, your Kevlar. It was so yeah. much fun, dude. It was so much fun because you're just out there, like in broad daylight, scaling this massive cage. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get on top of your building. And if you at home. <laughs> Are wondering why you want to get to the top. It's because fragmentation grenades and all other explosives happen to um, go downward when you throw Down. them. Down, yeah. They, gravity. B- called, the gravity. You know why you go to the top. It's called. It's called gravity. <laughs> right. That's why you go to the top. <laughs> ting, 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 ting. Simple ting. answer. Oh, why dude. Would you guys. Why do you guys want to go to the top of the building? Right. Uh, gravity. Gra- gravity. We're gonna fight gravity all the way to the top so that we can just bounce frag all the way into your fucking living room. How's that so? How's that now? Oh, dude. And the other thing, too, is the guys, like the fucking boots, who are like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to milk this grenade. Like, no, you're not, asshole. What are you talking about? Don't do that. Just don't. Drop that, bitch. Well, dude, That's here's dumb. my favorite thing in the world is when somebody wants to do, you know, like blue body training and stuff like that. Dude, I huck that thing so goddamn hard, it's insane. You want it to bounce off that wall, bounce off the other wall, skip up in the air. Like, whoa, 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 Goosh. That's what you want. That's what you want in that room. Like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Wham. And then it goes up. Same thing with the flashbang. Dude, I've, <laughs> I've seen what happens when somebody tries to milk a flashbang. Look like a lobster the rest of your life. Don't cook anything. Oh, Don't cook anything. Right? Get right. Fuck you. God ooh, damn it. Ooh. That shit's just that. Uh, I never got it. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh. Like a 1 1000. Are you fucking kidding no. me? No, I'm not holding. I'm not doing any of that. Well, it's like your bunker. story. I'm throwing it in the bunker. It's like your story about the lady. Where were you? You were in the Balkans. And oh, yeah. In, in, in the box. Yeah, with, with the, the box of fries. Band. Oh, the rot fucking rubber band. <laughs> Talk about your asshole, pucker. Oh, my God, dude. The thought of that right now. Oh, God. I, dude, I just got oh, chills. Man. I'm not even kidding. Oh, I man. I actually have. Just yeah, like, the wow. fucking EOD tech turned around and ran. <laughs> My squad leader and I are standing there looking at each other like, what the fuck? Did he just fucking run away? Really? Oh, my God. The guy who plays with bombs. Ran. He turned around and ran. (laughs) And and his name is Sergeant Burnus. He was Staff Sergeant Burnus. Oh, my God. And I still talk to him. He's a great fucking dude. That's so good. He's a fucking badass. I think he retired as a first sergeant. Like, uh... (laughs) <laughs> he was a seer instructor, yada, 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 the whole thing, right? So we're standing there in the fucking, <laughs> in the fucking 
God. In the fucking doorway. She goes, oh, yeah. You know, we can't understand a fucking word she's saying. Uh, and then so it's me, him, the translator, and the EOD guy. Who was He wasn't like in bomb suit or anything. No. You know, I mean, he's, he's just running. Because he's anything that came in front of us, you know, he would evaluate it. Right. This bitch turns around and runs. <laughs> the fucking... Him and I look, and I look oh at each God. other. We look at the we look at the freaking we know shit. We look at the uh, our interpreter and uh, he shrugs his shoulders. He's like, I don't know this fucking. Crazy. <laughs> look at this. Oh, so we're like, we're like, we're like, we're like, tell oh, her no. to put that shit on. Just, uh, just. Just set it on the counter right there. <laughs> oh man, dude! And she, oh and god, she's like it's reaching so good. out to us, like take it, take it, take it, and we're like, no, 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 no. Our hands are up, like what the? No, fuck? no, 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 no. <laughs> and so we start slowly backing away, but that bitch ran. Oh man, one of the funniest, oh, the funniest stories ever. But anyway, uh, yeah. He's so a the guy. <laughs> I love that in his head he's like, nope, and just <laughs> nope, I'm, a, I'm fucking out. out. Oh man, that's so good, dude. Yeah, I he never oh. heard the end of that. He never heard the end of that for the whole fucking deployment. It was yeah, funny. Oh my god. Oh my god. I wish I remembered his name. Oh, dude. See, Damn. that's that's like one of those things. Like we always worried about Iraqis putting stuff in the walls. Right. Okay, like putting grenades, putting RPGs, putting 155s in the wall. So anytime you were doing C- CQB, like, you know, we, we found grenade trip wires that were booby traps. We found just old Russian deck cord. <laughs> Yeah, running yeah, yeah, into yeah, the yeah. wall, we, that I red that deck cord, too. you know? Cuz we would do weapons inspections because it was part of the uh a treaty that was signed. Yeah. That they would only like cuz there was just militias like everywhere. Like each different nationality slash religious sect whether they were Bosniaks or like, you know, Muslims or Serbs or whatever. Yeah. They all had their like little military contingent. So we had to go. This was part of our job is we had to go and inspect their arms. And we came into one one time where shit got real as fuck because there were like a shit ton of mortar rounds missing. Right. Right. These motherfuckers had like plastered them into a wall. Yep. But they had also like the way that they had stacked them was like, dude, it's just right for it to go off. Absolutely. Plus they're all old as fuck, like oozing shit. <laughs> Shit, yeah, it's fucking bad. This is all bad. This is no bueno. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's... And some of them, they would put in those... So the, I can imagine that there. I can only imagine that, like, amplified in Iraq, dude. Oh, dude. Uh, okay. Fuck. Real, real quick. There's this little OP that we had demilled on our second tour, right? And this little OP, I think it was Haria, I can't remember. It was down, it was near 342, it was down in that vicinity of. And we went in there a handful of times to get Fragos when we were in the area, just in their their little COC inside of the compound. Okay. And they would tell us, you know, during these little op orders, look out for rigged explosives inside of the buildings that you're going into. Because they will blow the entire building down on you. We're like, oh, that's fun. You know, these guys are getting clever. And so, you know, we, I, I, I remember we found a couple of houses and a couple of compounds where there was exposed deck cord coming out of the plaster to where you could snip, put a, put your blasting caps on it and then blow that thing. So if we had walked into it, wham, it would have gone right. And they ripped explosives out of it. Well, Fast forward, okay, so in 2005, they're warning us that all of these compounds could be exploded in their COC, telling us in a frago. Fast forward to 2007, we demill that OP. In the COC wall, they find six 155 rounds. In the COC where they were telling us to look for that shit. Dude. In the wall. And the guys come that, walking out with that's it. That's crazy. And we're like, what the f- fuck is that and they're like yeah bro this was in the coc wall the entire time oh my god just what and it was entirely all cake plastered in all that stuff and so they're like yeah we were ripping shit out and found this and cleared everybody and eod demilled it and stripped it all back oh my god dude what just what and it's like you chose the right building i guess because they ain't getting in there to detonate it but if you guys took a direct hit on a mortar round that whole op would have came just (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, like how long is how long has an OP been there? It's like, I don't know, 2004 probably. So minimum, right. there was an OP in there for three and a half years. I mean, that's a really long time to set up an OP and have it permanently there. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. And you're not talking about a fob. You're talking about an OP out in town. Oh, dude. And that was always the haunting thing. Like, oh, yeah, okay, there's going to be guys in the building shooting at us. Who the fuck cares? So long as the walls don't blow up and cave in. You know, whatever. Because that would, oh, man, there was a time, and thank God, the majority of the time I was a driver, but we hit Swiss Cheese Building with a bunch of fucking ordnance. It was like, Ugh. it was like two J-dams went into the side of this big-ass building. I think it was, uh... I mean, I want to say it was six, seven stories tall, and it was all blown to shit. There were civilians in it, but the, the majority of them were shitheads. So the civilians lived in the bottom. The shitheads go up to the top and shoot at us and then go hang out with the civilians in the bottom, right? And so we hit the building. Guys ran into it, and the whole building started to come down while our team was in there. And I was sitting in the truck. Jesus Christ. Dude, like, <laughs> like dude. This thing, unstable. You guys need to get back to the truck. And Willie was on the hook or on the uh, PRR. Like, you guys got to get out of the building. And I had the squawk box in my right ear. And then I had the hook for the section uh, up in my left ear. So I had complete communication. Blade was talking with Government Center. And Government Center is like, Swiss cheese is about to collapse. And then I heard Vehicle 4 like, you got to get the fuck out of there. And this whole thing's like... And you could hear the building just, it was like something out of fucking Transformers, dude. And our team comes just running out of this dusty fucking building with all of these civilians and they're trying to help people out and everything else. And they're all running out of this building, you know, and you got to remember they're jumping in between all of these electrical wires that are spider webbed off of this fucking thing. Cause everybody's got a wire that's going to their house from the generator. So there's just all of this debris and shit and electrical stuff all over. It's like, Oh, the building doesn't get you. You're going to get shocked to death. You know, it's like, Whoa, dude, this is great. Crazy. And they all come jumping out of the building, running back to the trucks, and we have the doors open. They come in and get the fuck out of here. I just went as fast as I could straight towards the government center and busted a left. And then as we went past retard and then up sunset, which these are all names of streets, as we went up sunset, the building started to like and then collapse into part of the cemetery, which they were real happy about. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Oh, dude. Oh, man, that was one of those days. Fatal Funnel, man. All about that Fatal Funnel. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what. Just crazy. What are you going to do? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, fuck. See, that's one of those to where it's like, I want to get all of those guys on the show to, <laughs> to be like, so what was happening in there when you were running in? <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. Dude, I just remember, like, one of my biggest things that I just remember is just doing fucking battle drills over and over and yes. over again. Like, he poses, sandbag houses. Dude, just like, mm -hmm. I, yeah, fuck. Dude, I was talking with Bishop the other day. We were talking up, about. Do a battle drill. Do a battle drill. Sit. Battle drill, sit. <laughs> oh my God, he snapped fuck. into character. Uh, oh my. God, dude. No, man. Well, was... the army, the army, it's FM 7 8. Oh, this is a <sighs> thing in the army. Yeah. Well, no, it's the, it's the, it's the FM that covers infantry and squad. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's FM 7 8. But I don't remember it not for the Marines. I don't remember what it is. Uh, I remember, I remember FM uh, like 90 it... something or other that was Mount shit. But I don't remember, like, you know pub, what I mean? The name of the pub. Right. The what? Yeah, the name uh, of the pub that covered it, right? I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the field uh, manual either, but I know that it fits within nine thousand series training in the TNR manual because yeah, I'm a nerd. Right, right. I went through the TNR I mean, manual so, and I was like, "What is the coolest thing in the TNR manual that I can check a box in to complete everything else for the PAT team?" So we went out and we would do the pistol training. You know what I'm talking about? And we would do CQB yeah. with pistols. We would do fatal funnel shit yeah, with yeah. pistols. Sure. And uh, I was like, great. So what we'll do is we'll go out and we'll check all of the boxes there. And then we'll do CQB training. And that covers everything in between. That's your entire combat pistol shit. So you're asserted all the way out. And I would purposely do that one in the training of the things, One of the things that they actually got smart about 
which was kind of uh, cool, is that they actually did like a joint forces doctrine with, you know, military operations and urban terrain, which made a lot of fucking sense, yes. finally, um, for, for some of that, because we were all doing the same work, right? Yes. Um, so they finally did that shit, but uh, I don't know what any of it is anymore. Like I said, I've been out of the game for it was- a long fucking time. I mean, I did plenty of the shit in private, too, um, especially when we would, you know, play fucking laser tag at the nuclear plant that was always fucking fun yeah and all these tactics came in very handy right but uh um yeah dude I've been out of the game for so long. Oh, man. For us, it was always cool. out at range. So range 215, 215 alpha were just these little mount towns when I joined the Corps, right? And when I got to 3-7 and started doing mount training with them, we would roll up and they were honestly no shit the size of like just two little main streets is all that it was. Right. Now, yeah, yeah. like I remember oh, yeah. at the tail end of my time in the Corps when we went out there, you're talking about whole cities whole cities out there out in other training areas that being what everybody knows there are other training areas around 29 palms that if you don't know you don't know uh but there are these huge massive fobs that they created they're just i mean holy shit dude you know what they did in taking all of these old construction containers connex boxes and creating all of these mount towns is just absolutely amazing i mean it's just nuts dude and when we started going through it, you know, it you can tell. Obviously, like the walls, they try to make them rock and blah, blah, blah. It's some Hollywood shit. We understand that. Not everything looks identical to Iraq or Afghanistan. I get it. But, right, right, right. But you can put little strips of wood, for instance, in the door. So that way, when you kick in the door, it's got that, you know, feels like you're kicking a bolt through. Um, the containers themselves have furniture in them. So you have to contend with furniture. You know, CQB, there's shit on the ground. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's the, <laughs> you know? the last... The last big mount exercise that I did was, at, and this this dates me, so anyone that listens will know, uh, was at uh, JRTC. God, this is like 2003, maybe yep. 2001, maybe not 2001. Yeah, 2001, prior to 9/11, before we deployed to Egypt, right? Yeah. So we were in. Uh, well, we did one at. NTC, but either way, there's a mount city at the Joint Readiness Training Center that's in Louisiana called it's Shugard Gordon, nice. um, named after Shugard and Gordon. Yep, uh, guys sort of Black Hawk Down, right? Yep. And that at the time was one of the biggest mount facilities there were. Now I'm sure there's, you know, fucking Ramadi size, or, you know, just gigantic sized freaking things. Yeah. But this had like, you know, I'd say, I don't, 20 plus buildings, right? Everything from a hotel to a hospital to a town, you know, houses and post office and city hall had a sewer system, everything. Yep. Um, you got to crawl through uh, culverts and do all sorts yeah, of shit like that. that. Oh, I yeah. Getting, we got our clocks clean going through the fucking sewer one time. But anyway, that's another episode. But uh, yeah, man, it's fucking crazy. Just trying to make get that foothold where you get one building on the outskirt and uh, holy shit. Oh, yeah. Op four, op four is a fucking nightmare. But oh, anyway, yeah. I was that know, guy. And then, and, then, and then we got <laughs> and then we got, uh, you know, then we everyone deployed to Iraq and did that shit for real so fucking crazy see that i don't even know if sugar gordon exists anymore i'm sure it probably does but it's it's you know it's tiny compared to what they've got to have now but maybe not i don't know yeah see that's awesome there you go factoid of the day yeah there you go all right we gotta wrap it up Ugh. we do i love shooting guns and stuff you know if anybody out there wants us to play op four the opposition force We'll totally do that. Totally. Totally do Should that. Should start an op for it. I'm sure there's plenty of them out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Fucking op for it. Did you know that they make <laughs> a paintball version of the Walther PPQ? Yeah. Totally yeah. fucking Dude, buying that. You can you can have, I mean, they've even got, well, the sim round shit is amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, Getting like shot the, in the, the face with that sucks. That does not, oh, so I'll, I don't know. I might have told this story, but I told the story before, but it goes along with Fatal Funnels and, and OCs and Op Force, right? So mm-hmm. OCs are supposed to wear designators on the fucking battlefield at night. Right. Like right. they'd either wear IR flashers or red something that would designate them as an OC. Right. We had made this foothold in this fucking building 
and I see movement on the building across the way, right? And right. Our guys are, and we're pulling security on this courtyard, basically, to make sure that no fires are coming across as guys go up the fucking central stairwell, right? Right. To, to hit the top of the building. Well, I see movement on the, on the roof of the building across. So what the fuck? If it's not designated as an OC, I'm smoking that shit, right? Right. And we were using Semrounds at the time. So I fucking, I, me and, and one of my guys, I'm like, all right, on the count of three, we're going to smoke this fucking, you know, you, you can kind of see movement. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because the NVGs were working, but it was really dark night. So as soon as that shit hits, I'm lazing it, and I want you dudes to smoke it, right? Right. <laughs> so I freaking laze the point. Boom. We all, all three of us open fire on the fucking spot. <laughs> we just hear, oh, fuck, shit, fuck, fuck, right? That's Hell yeah. Here. And then we're like, all right, we killed that bitch. Right. Well, at the at, so at the end of the fucking exercise, come, who comes screaming into the fucking... <laughs> AAR, that's the <laughs> Battalion XO. Major, I can't even remember his fucking. I can't remember his name. This dude's uh, got a well, a well on the side of his fucking neck <laughs> that looked like he got hit with a sledgehammer. It was like the size of a softball. Oh my god! We had dude. fucking just pummeled his ass with oh fucking sim rounds. It was no protective gear. He had suck it. He had eye pro on, thank God. But smoke. He had this well on the side of his neck. This shit, you know, it looked like a softball. Right. It We're good. We're He's good like, at our job, sir. That, shit. And I was like, that was us, sir. <laughs> should have had your freaking, and my exact words are, should have had your IR beacon blanket. Right. He looks at me and he can't, well, what, what the fuck can he say? He can't. I was a corp, I was a corporal. He you're right. And he goes, corporal, God damn it, you're right. And he turns around and walks away. <laughs> it was fucking hysterical. Uh, that's good shit. Anyway. There you go. Fatal funnel, bitches. Well, there you are, folks. That's why you listen to Cigars and Sea Stories. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Check out the reviews on cigarsandseastories.com homepage. Uh, it's awesome. You guys are great, and we love those reviews, and you're just awesome. So thank We've you so much for good listening. Ones lately. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> read really through them. Cool. Like, people take the time out of their day. You know, okay, giving us five stars is amazing, first of all. But you're taking time out of your day to write a review? Like, you guys rock. Anyway, I love you yep, guys. That is cool. So, so that's cool. Thank you. We you're really so appreciate it. Gay. I am. I'm a little gay for our audience. It's okay. Little gay. It's a little, it's a little something. Uh, thank you so much to our collaborators, our, our network over there, Heroes Media Group, which they're doing amazing things. I just had a regroup with Adam Bird. Oh, man. They're just, yeah. HMG, couple check new, them out. A couple new shows, things going on over there. Yeah, man. That's pretty nuts. Uh, Spartan Media. Uh, so if you guys are in the trades or the construction or contracting and you need a new website, Spartan Media can hook you up. That's one of the things that they do. If you need help with marketing and getting the reviews and doing social audits and all of that other good stuff, work with McPherson Marketing Group, all right, which is another one of our collaborators, McPherson Marketing Group. And um, I want to do a special thank you to Hakoa for working with us. And we're going to do an episode on Hakoa and how this works and how we fit together and 5P and all of that other stuff coming together as a yeah, thing. It's awesome. Paragraph. Right. Well, and you'll see folks at home how Hakoa fits into this whole grand scheme maneuver and what we can really offer together which is really neat so that's coming up in a later episode but thanks so much to everybody who continues to listen to the podcast continues to share continues to like us on facebook and go ahead share all of those great posts bennett is the mastermind behind that so you can blame him if it's annoying shit anyway love you guys bennett you got anything for the peeps i'm Say the it. king of spam so it's very spammy <laughs> I'm the king Other than of. I got nothing. I'm the king of spam. You gotta say it spam. creepy. I'm the king of spam. Say it creepy. Come on. Yeah. Spam. <laughs> I'm the king of spam. <laughs> got that fucking voice. I throw it down like yeah. Oh god. Anyway. And, and on that note, we cue the music. Mm.